The meeting will now hear an address by His Excellency uh, Josiah Voreke Bainimarama, Prime Minister and Minister for Itaukai Affairs, Sugar Industry, Foreign Affairs and Forestry of the Republic of Fiji. Mr. President, Your Excellencies, Bula Vinaka, Excellencies, in uh, 1957, a contingent of uh, Fijian soldiers and sailors set course for Christmas Island. That day, his commanding officer could see his uh, men's fear upon learning their mission was a hydrogen bomb test. He never forgot it, nor would he ever forget the 800 uh, kiloton blast they were made to witness from the boat deck. That uh, officer, ladies and gentlemen, was uh, Ratunoke Mbainimurama, my late father. He was not tested for radiation, nor were the men under his command. And while many succumbed to early deaths, their suffering was silenced by history. I am not here for my father's sake. I'm here for the countless stories like his own across the world. The Pacific alone endured more than 300 nuclear tests on land, air, sea, and below the seabed that unleashed the equivalent of uh, more than 14,000 of the bombs that dro were dropped on Hiroshima. The people of French Polynesia and the Marshall Islands still suffer birth defects, cancers, and other deadly generational consequences of the devastation. The terrible legacy of those tests were the only waste that was created. It was the weapons that were perfected. Thousands of missiles and trillions of dollars later, every person on earth is hostage to arsenals that threaten our existence. Today, Fiji is proud to join over 86 states to adopt a treaty on prohibition of nuclear weapons and take this first step back from the knife edge of Armageddon. I congratulate you, Mr. President, on this first meeting. It is not idealism that uh, convinces us. It is level-headed common sense that calls on us to do away with this means of species extinction. Neither are we the fringe of the debate. We are a coalition, united by a shared value for human life. I welcome the NATO members who have joined us. This solution depends on your influence and action. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, per capita, Fijians contribute more of our sons and daughters to UN peacekeeping than any country. We have fought for peace. Our people have died for it. And I can tell you, we can never know genuine peace if nations use the apocalypse as a bargaining, bargaining chip. True peace is built by people with people, not behind desks with our fingers hovering over buttons. Mutually uh, assured destruction isn't a strategy. It is a sham that merely shifts the cost of war. We've seen that price paid in Syria, in Afghanistan, and yet again on our collective watch in Ukraine, a conflict where nuclear facilities were weaponized and nuclear warfare was shamefully threatened. These uh, weapons uh, are the cause is opportunity. This first meeting is held as the COVID-19 pandemic still ravages many parts of the world. A global food crisis rages on a scale not seen in our lifetimes, and a runaway climate crisis threatens lives, livelihoods, and the very future of our civilization. Nuclear weapons will never defeat these enemies. They do not feed us, they do not clothe us, or keep out the rising seas. They are relics, multi-trillion dollar monuments to the worst horror that war can create. They 
epitomize the same short-sightedness that created the climate crisis, worsened the pandemic, and continues to keep food from the hungry. Worse, the staggering uh, uh, expense cripples our response to these challenges. The nine nuclear nations are projected to spend more than 100 billion US dollars every year to maintain their nuclear arsenals. Need I remind everyone, uh, remind uh, anyone, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that is the sum of finance developed nations pledge and then failed to deliver to climate vulnerable nations by 2020. Every dollar we spend on these missiles instead of seawalls, resilient crops, relocations and renewables is a moral aberration, a failure of the most basic choice between life or death. Fiji has signed and ratified the Treaty on Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons and we endorse its full scope and ambition. Our message to all nations is that when they come to our region, they leave their nuclear weapons behind. This treaty follows years of advocacy and policies that are vital to our global effort for peace, including through non-proliferation treaties. We welcome this treaty's consideration of the plight of those affected by the use and testing of nuclear weapons who have been silenced and denied the care and support they needed. I urge us to go further for these survivors by creating a policy framework that considers the existential impact on the nuclear testing of our oceans and environment exacerbated by the climate crisis and its long-term consequences of the displacement of communities from their traditional lands due to ever encroaching nuclear waste. To my fellow Fijians watching from home, as your leader, I uh, reassure you that we will work closely with our states, large and small, through this conference and through every bilateral engagement to secure a nuclear weapons-free world and to heal the wounds of a dark nuclear legacy that continues to harm lives and communities across the region. That is both my solemn duty and my firmest commitment. Your Excellencies, my fellow leaders, we have a moment before us that can free the minds, the resources and technologies that are captive to this in insane industry. We can finally set our priorities straight and walk a path that preserves life instead of threatens it. Mr. President, it would uh, be remiss of me not to thank the many leaders from across the Blue Pacific before me and thousands of faith-based and civil society leaders and members who have campaigned relentlessly for decades. Today, we do more than hear them and those who have suffered from these weapons. We take a step towards the justice and genuine peace that they deserve. Thank you.